Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm going to be starting a segment now on Formula One. I think there's a lot of great topics that can come from Formula One. In fact, I could probably do the entire channel on Formula One um, from here on out if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but there's a lot of great topics that can come from it, so I'm going to try and cover the major ones. And you may be thinking, well, hey, Formula One is great, but I can't apply it to my car, so I, maybe I don't, you don't care about it as much. Well, actually, Formula One kind of paves the way for a lot of the technology that we see in our road cars, so even if you're not into something that you can't apply to your own car, this will still apply to your own car. There's plenty of things that you can learn from this and take away from and look at your own car and say, hey, that's why this is like this, or hey, that's why that piece of technology is there. So for this first video, if you already know a lot about Formula One, it'll probably be just a basic overview. Hopefully you can learn a couple things from it, but basically what I'm just going to cover is inside and out of a Formula One car, uh, show you the basics, tell you what everything is called so that we get the terminology down, and then show kind of where all the components are located. So anyways, here we have the outside of a fabulous Formula One car. You can see that's pretty much perfectly drawn, uh, proportional and all. Anyway, so we'll just start at the front work our way back. So we've got the front wing here, responsible for a good portion of the downforce. You've got the wheels, the brakes, the suspension, all unique, very unique for uh, Formula One as far as what they use, and I'll start going into that. Um, I know a lot of people have requested push rod suspension, so I'll definitely get into that topic, as well as the wheels and braking here. Uh, you've got your steering wheel, which alone can, can take a whole topic. I mean, there's so many buttons on that thing and so many different things that you can, driver settings that you can manipulate, so that's a great topic. Uh, we've got the intake here, which feeds the engine. The rear wing, also responsible for a lot of the downforce. And then the diffuser, which also makes up a great portion of your downforce. Keep the car planted. And then you've got these side pods here on either side of the car. And inside those you'll have the radiators and oil coolers um, to help keep the engine running at a good temperature. All right, so if you cut that car in half and you're looking inside, what will you see? So we'll just start at the front again, work our way back. So here at the front, there's going to be an open space, and that's basically just a crumple zone for driver safety. So that if you have a front end impact, you've got some space for the car to kind of crush in before you start to get affected by it. So it keeps the driver safe. And actually, um, driver safety has been pretty impeccable with Formula One. There haven't been any deaths since, I believe, early to mid-90s. I think the last was uh, Art and Senna who died in Formula One. Um, so driver safety has really improved, uh, especially the past 10 years or so. Um, so then you've got your driver. Your driver's going to be positioned basically as low as possible to keep the center of gravity of the whole car down. So you're almost kind of laying down, especially where your legs are and you know the lower part of your body, and then you kind of just peek up so you have just enough room to see over the, over the top and drive. It seems like kind of scary setup. I've actually sat in one and it was I felt like the visibility was pretty poor, but I mean, it's, it's what you got to do to get the best lap time, so that's what they do. Underneath the driver, <clears throat> you'll have electronics. Um, in the new Formula One cars, this will, is where you might find the Kerr system. Uh, so you'll have like a battery pack underneath the driver and perhaps like a little generator in front of that, uh, which will be linked to the, to the brakes uh, for regenerating energy to use with the uh, curves. I have a video on curves if you haven't yet watched that, so that's a great place to check out how that works. Uh, behind the driver, directly behind the driver, you'll have the fuel tank. <clears throat> and this fuel tank will be divided up. So it'll have these sections, uh, these horizontal sections, uh, they call them baffles. And so what that does is, as, as you start to use your fuel, the fuel and just kind of decreases and so these baffles prevent the fuel from sloshing upward so if you go around a corner at 4 G's I mean obviously all the fuel would just be straight to the side of that uh, it wouldn't be laying down at the bottom so these baffles prevent fuel from going up so as you consume fuel the fuel goes down but it can't come back up into these upper levels it's just got a system of simple valves that uh, don't allow the, the fuel to splash back up right behind that you've got your oil tank for uh, assisting with the engine cooling and keeping that lubricated. Then right behind that you've got your engine. So the intake for the engine just feeds directly overhead of the engine and that's what's right behind the driver, that hole that you see on the car that's just the air intake. Um, so it's kind of like a ram air intake because at high speeds you're going to be just 
forcing all that air right into the engine. Right behind the engine, you of course have your clutch, um, and so these are going to be multi-plate uh, clutches, um, which will connect to the transmissions. Um, and then, of course, you've got your transmissions. They use sequential uh, gearboxes in Formula One, so I'll try to go into that as well. I know a lot of people have requested that, so that'll be a good topic. So yeah, that's just the basic overview of Formula One. Hopefully we can get a lot of good videos out of this, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this segment. Now, unfortunately, there's no junkyard nearby where I can just go take apart some Formula One cars, so I won't be able to have video footage of these vehicles. However, I have been fortunate enough to travel to Marinello, Italy, and I have toured the uh, Galleria Ferrari there, so I have plenty of images that I will be using um, to help explain some of these topics. Um, so there I am hanging out in a Formula One car. Um, it was great just to kind of see what the driver's setup was like and just see how kind of cramped they are in there. Um, I'm about 6'1", 6'2", so it's, it's definitely a squeeze trying to fit my entire body in that. So it's, it's pretty impressive to see what the, the drivers have to struggle with with these Formula One cars as far as, as what the engineers force them to, to do and how they sit in these vehicles.